What's up guys? Uh, Salty Southern Fishing here. Um, as you can see, it's been a rough couple days of weather here. Um, my job and then coaching with baseball season starting up. Uh, I haven't been able to get out at all in the past month really. Um, so no lack of videos, or well, a bunch of lack of videos, um, I should say. Um, but what I want to do today was just show you kind of how I set up my uh, finder with my pod here, um, especially with this uh, Kayak Big Fish 120, as most of you have seen in my uh, other videos. But I just kind of want to go through how I set this up um, and really just the convenience of it and how it works. Um, so first off, I, I did get the Garmin uh, Striker 4. Um, it was on sale on Amazon, and that was really the reason I bought it. Um, I don't need anything super crazy here. Um, just wanted something that would do the job, track where I was going, especially as I was going in the backwater, and then just get depth. Um, so for me, this is all it was. It was, ended up being around just under 100 bucks, I think. Um, super simple, super cheap, um, and, and for me, it, it, it has done its job. Um, so going to just kind of the kayak, how we install there. One thing that I wanted to add is that this one in particular, if I press this, there's a little button right down here. All I have to do is press, and then I will slide the Garmin out, and it comes out right there. Boom. And that's just how um, it comes with. The beauty of that is, if it starts raining, the Garmin actually goes right in there and is uh, protected for the most part. Um, one thing with the big fish, uh, the box, as convenient as it is, it is not 100% waterproof. Now that being said, um, I use it mostly as a dry box, um, but every once in a while, you know, I, I faced about a one foot chop uh, with wind in my face and, you know, I get about a quarter of an inch of water in there. So something to consider, it's not 100% dry proof, but it, it does the job for me. And I'll, I'll explain why it gets water in there as we go through. Um, but, let's see. So the first step I did, I, I went ahead and installed the mount where I wanted. I kind of faced towards the back, that way I still had a bunch of space up front. Um, pretty standard. And then again, it just slides right on in. When I put it in my truck, it's a, it's a small Tacoma, but when I put it in there, I just take the uh, actual unit off. That way it'll actually fit in the truck with the, uh, I have a topper that'll go down on it. Um, again, the beauty <laughs> of this kayak is that this pod will actually lift open and out. So I squeeze and I'm out. So when I installed this, you can see right here, there's my transducer. Um, again, it just goes right on the bottom and I'll try and get as far underneath as I can, but the transducer will not stick out there. That is the opening as we go right down here. You can see up through there, um, but it won't stick out there. Um, so that was a, a major concern. I've seen other transducers actually stick out of there, but it won't do that. And then of course, what I did with this transducer was when I did mount it, super easy, super simple install. Um, just put some silicone or marine grade sealant um, on both sides of my screws. That way the water wouldn't get up through there. Um, that, that's never the issue with the water. Um, you just, if you don't close this tightly, it's, it's not sealed. It's not sealed up here at the uh, rim, I should say, for water, um, but does a good job. Um, again, not waterproof, but definitely I'll go with like water resistant. Um, so when, when, when I did install, um, of course I have all my, my wiring down here. This little docket is amazing because I can actually put all my stuff, all my batteries, everything that goes in there, and it has a little port out here, which I'm able to go out, I'll go up and boom, plug it right into my unit. Um, this is actually where most of my water comes in from. If you wanted, you could seal this off completely. So you have my transducer wire coming in here. Uh, you could put some silicone or marine uh, sealant up in here. For me, it, it was just way too permanent. 
So I decided not to until I figure out something else or, or, or whatever that may be. Um, just got my wires nice and tight. Um, still has this little, you know, like rubber sealant here that, that does a good job. Um, uh, no issues, but just want to emphasize the, it's not water resistant completely. Um, other than that, that's not the only thing I really have issues with, but, but in terms of having this, amazing. Super convenient, super easy. And then, once I lift this up, hold on. You'll kind of see what I did in here. I went ahead and just condensed all my wiring that I didn't really need. Um, and then I took a, a Tupperware box right here, put some silicone, that's just straight up silicone right down there, um, to close up those gaps. And then when I open this, this is actually a 100% waterproof uh, Tupperware container. So just bear with me as I do this with one hand, sort of. As you can see, from there, I got all my wiring ready to go. Um, that goes right in there whenever I need it. On my battery, I honestly, uh, it's a replacement battery, but it's just super simple. I think it's actually a, uh, I want to say it's a sprinkler system battery or some type of sprinkler battery. Um, don't know, picked it up from Lowe's. Um, works wonders. Have yet to charge it and still got my fish finder going probably over, at this point, 24 hours. Um, I don't use the fish finder too much, but I definitely want it on there just to mark points and uh, a little depth as I go through. So something to consider, definitely 12 volt. Um, not marine grade, meaning there's get, if water gets on it, it you know, it's going to rust and corrode. But with my little waterproof container here, I'm able just to plop that in there. It gives me enough room to store any extra wiring. Oop, there we go. So I'll put this on there. It'll go in there. All I do is I just connect my wires, and I'm good to go. Obviously, the red with the red, black with the black, good old standard stuff. More silicone. I kind of loaded it up just to make sure it was definitely uh, waterproof. Not the prettiest job. Um, but does it well. Um, no issues for me so far. So if you have any questions on that, um, that's just my little my sonar pod there um, with my Garmin Striker 4, which I can click into and, and be done with. Um, my next big project here is going to be figuring out how to install a trolling motor on this kayak. Um, love this kayak, but as you, as you know from my previous video, it's a little heavy, so I'm either going to look at finding a way to put the trolling motor on the back, which I'm not necessarily leaning towards, or um, I've looked at YouTube and figured out how to way to put a little mount back here on these two flush mount rod holders to see if I can figure out a way to have a little extra push in my kayak. That way it takes out some time for me fishing and I don't have to worry about where I'm going or what I'm doing, especially when I get into some high currents. So if you have any suggestions on that, um, Usually I'm looking to fish towards um, St. Augustine area in Northeast Florida. Um, any suggestions for me there? I'm obviously always taken. I like to go towards St. Augustine mostly. Um, Guana, the Guana Lake, Guana River is kind of where I'm trying to, to, to test my new trolling motor once I get it going. But more videos on that to come. Also stay tuned for my... My wheel cart here, I'll show you guys how I how I did this. Super simple, super easy, super cheap, of course. So stay tuned for that. Um, I got spring break coming up. Um, if you guys know, I'm a teacher, so hopefully once the weather clears, um, in the next couple weeks, I'll have some fishing videos up on me uh, trying new areas, trying guana, and uh, see what I can come up with. Until next time, guys. See you later.